happy Sunday afternoon, you guys. And I am making um, homemade mac and cheese for dinner. So I figured I would turn on the camera and show you guys how I make it. I, I think I made a video on this a long time ago, but it's probably older now. So we're going to redo it. We're going to do it a little bit different. Um, with my mac and cheese, sometimes I add home canned chicken to it and um, frozen broccoli that I steam in, um, in a steamer bag. Or um, sometimes I just leave it plain. Tonight I'm going to be adding one of my homegrown Anaheim peppers that I threw in the freezer. So that's actually thawing as we speak. I'm going to chop that up real fine, and I'm going to add that into my um, into my homemade uh, mac and cheese. And I'm also going to be adding some sweet corn to it, um, kind of like a famous Dave's kind of mac and cheese a little spice to it a little bit of corn it's going to be really really good and really hearty uh, it's cold out today so um this will this is a a comfort food not something you want to eat all the time but uh, once in a while it's a okay, good treat so to my pan i am going to be adding five tablespoons of butter while i'm letting that butter melt i'm just going to throw in my anaheim pepper you don't have to add this and if you can't find anaheim pepper i mean i grew mine um you can use jalapeno this just kicks it up a, a notch the um the anaheim is a little bit more mild than jalapeno and remember i'm cooking for little kids so um they do enjoy a little bit of spice but not too much not too much heat so this is a nice happy medium for both parents and kids so um but you can definitely leave this out if you now want. i also have my oven preheating to 400 degrees so you'll want to do that and i have one pound of macaroni noodles um cooking right now uh, in a pot next to it you can see it over there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about five tablespoons of flour to this. I'm going to start with four and see how it looks. Okay, so there's four. Get this whisked in. And you'll be able to tell if you need it a little thicker or not. Hmm, I'll add just a little bit. I don't even think it's going to be a, a tablespoon. I think it's going to be like maybe a teaspoon at that. I like it thick, but not too thick. And again, you're going to do uh, just like we did with the chicken pot pie um, and we made the, the gravy for it. You're going to want to cook this flour so you'll see that it gets kind of nice and bubbly if you can see that in there. And when it's cooking, you can start smelling it. It, it will be really nutty. It'll smell really good. It, my kids think it smells like popcorn, <laughs> like, but, like, like buttered popcorn. Um, but... Um, yeah, you'll smell it. It'll smell nice and nutty, so you'll know when that flour is cooked. So I'm just going to give this a minute or so. You want to keep it moving. You want to make sure you don't burn it. My heat, my flame is over medium right now. So... And then when we get to this point where it starts cooking, we're going to add our milk. Now, just like my chicken pot pie, I like to add just a little bit of heavy whipping cream. Just a little bit. It just adds a richness. You do not have to do that if you do not want to. And then we're going to go ahead and start adding. You're going to add about four cups of milk, but I never measure that way. Um, I just eyeball it until I get it to consistency I like. I'm just going to whisk this in here. And it'll thicken up pretty quickly on you. Okay, 
Okay, so instead of like a gravy, we are making a cheese sauce. You do not want it lumpy, so you want to make sure you really whisk it well. Keep it on that heat, and if you have to, add a little bit more milk until you get it nice and smooth. stirring it. Don't leave it <laughs> and it'll come to a boil here. You'll start seeing it pop and then you can really see your consistency whether or not you need to um, add a little bit more milk or if you're good. And I'm just gonna add just a tiny bit more milk here. I think that's going to be it for me. Okay, so when you get it nice and thick to a nice thick consistency with it not being watery, you don't want it watery, but you don't want it thick like paste either. You want it to be like a really good cheese sauce. Once you get it here, now we're going to add our cheese and actually turn it into a cheese sauce. So I'm going to be using, <laughs> I forgot to um, take some cheese out of the freezer. So we are going to be using some frozen cheddar here, mild cheddar. My kids really don't like the sharp cheddar, um, but you can use whatever cheese you want. So I'm going to go ahead and toss a bag of cheese in here. You can grate your own too if you want. So that is the equivalent of four cups of cheese if you're gonna grate it yourself. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn off my heat because all we really wanna do now is melt this cheese. Let me get this stirred in here and turn it into a cheese sauce. And I'm gonna go ahead and also stir my noodles because those should be about ready as well. All right, so if you have to turn your heat back on low just to make sure that everything gets melted, go ahead and do that. Um, I like cooking this in cast iron because cast iron, cast iron holds the heat a little bit longer. So once you get your cheese sauce made, now we are going to flavor it. So I don't have any exact measurements for you because like I said I just eyeball it but I would say probably a teaspoon of fresh cracked black pepper well that's a pepper medley I think about a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt now this is all to taste so if you don't like any of these flavors don't add them um, I like to add a little bit of granulated onion to this and always start off a little bit and then taste it and then if you find that you need a little bit more add a little bit more I like a little bit of granulated garlic and I also like a little bit of sweet paprika in mine and go ahead and give that a whisk all right, so now I'm just going to take a little taste here of it. And I'm gonna say it just needs a little tad more salt, a little tad more black pepper, and a little tad more of the sweet paprika. I will give that a try in with a new clean spoon oh that is spot on <laughs> that is spot on you do have to remember too 
that when you put pasta in here, the um, flavor will mellow quite a bit. So you wanna make sure your cheese sauce is pretty flavorful. Okay, so now once we have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this whisk. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add some corn in here. You don't have to use the whole can. Save the can for dinner, for another dinner. Just a little bit. So let's go ahead and add. I'm gonna add about half of it to start. And get this blended in here. Now the trick to a good mac and cheese when you make it homemade for me is um, if you add too much pasta, the mac and cheese will be really dry. So going into the oven, you kind of want it a little wet um, so that when it bakes and you bring it out, it's still cheesy. So go ahead and add a bit more. Any leftover pasta that I have, I will probably make into um, garlic butter noodles for my kids for lunch tomorrow because they love that. And uh, I just steam a bag of um, broccoli because they love broccoli and I mix it in there and they love it. So nothing will go to waste for sure. And we are getting close to being perfect here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more pasta to this. If you want this to be a one pot meal, you can add home canned chicken to this. Um, you can add some steamed broccoli to this. You can add cauliflower to this. I'm gonna be serving this tonight with um, a nice fresh uh, garden salad. And so you can do whatever you want. It's your mac and cheese, right? <laughs> All right, so that is it. That is the mac and cheese, you guys. Let me pick you up so that you can see it. So you see it's it's kind of wet. It's not super dry, but that's because when it cooks here, it's going to absorb a lot of that cheese, and you don't want it super dry. So now I'm going to put this in a 400-degree oven um, until the top is nice and golden brown. So I'm going to put it in my oven now, and I'll bring you guys back when I pull it out. All right, so there you have it. Now my mac and cheese was in for about 40 minutes. Look at that. And then I'll let it sit here and rest, I don't know, for about five, 10 minutes before I serve it up. But that is it. And Matt, do you want to taste it? I don't think I should. <laughs> now while it's lava hot, come on. A new meaning to That's not even hot a hot chew. chew. That's, not a, that's scalding chew. <laughs> All right. We'll give it five, ten I mean, minutes. I can blow on it. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> we'll, we'll give it five or ten minutes and then we'll have Matt taste a little bit, but look at that. Right? And you see, it's like, um, you'll see it. It, it, it. It'll be nice. It won't be super thick. It'll still have a nice cheese to it. So, all right. <laughs> I'll let this cool down a minute before we, we make Matt taste this. Right. Slice into this now that it's little cooler just so you guys can see it too so you can see that it's nice and cheesy and it's not um, it's not overly dry to me well it took me a while to learn that but um, I don't like an overly dry mac and cheese so there you have it all right Matt give it a try <laughs> mm, that's really good. Good? Yeah. That's really good. So there you have it, you guys. Super easy. You can make your own mac and cheese, and um, there's just something really good about cooking it in the cast iron uh, skillet. That's just, I don't know, it just makes it mm. taste so much better. <laughs> Anyway, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little recipe on a Sunday night. And um, 
I'm gonna let this cool a little bit further and then I'll feed the kids and uh, get on with our nightly Sunday night routine here. So guys, I hope uh, you enjoyed this and I will be seeing you guys soon. All right, bye guys.